My song is Here I Am Lord and my story starts in 1991 when I was living in South Africa. I was helping out in our church office. Each day, as happened in South Africa, a couple of people from the squatter camp over the hill behind the church would wander up looking for food. The squatter camps were informal settlements of poor people, many unemployed, who could not get formal housing and lived in a settlement of sprawling shacks without facilities. George and Margaret, who ran the church office, would give them cans of soup or baked beans, whatever they had in the office. In those days, the cans did not come with a handy hook to pull the lids, and I often wondered how they improvised to open the cans. It started me thinking that maybe I could make them sandwiches, which I did, and brought them into the office each day. After a week, we noted that more people were coming in, and I was making a loaf of bread each day. Sherry, a friend of mine at church who was an expat from America, offered to help out and make the sandwiches. Soon it was four loaves of bread a day and was becoming a bit disruptive in the office with dreams of people lining up outside for sandwiches. Our minister was George Irvine, who some of you might know, as he did an exchange with Ross Mackay from North Rock some years ago. He spoke to me and said he wondered if what was happening might be a call to feed the hungry. He suggested I sound a call to the congregation that Sunday, which I did, and then wait to see what happened. I told the congregation my story and invited anyone who might feel that God was calling them to feed the hungry to meet on Friday night. That night there were 12 people. Personally, I was thinking along the lines of a soup kitchen in the church hall, but there were a few others who had different ideas. For example, a teacher who noticed children coming to school hungry in the morning and other possible options. I wondered how we would ever get consensus. We asked everyone to go away and pray over the next week and meet again the following Friday night. That night there were only five of us and each of us came with the same thought, that of a soup kitchen. On Sunday we told the congregation of our vision and sang the hymn that I've mentioned. To cut a very long story short, after a few months of prayer, discussion and negotiation, it was decided we would run a soup kitchen, not at the church, but at the squatter camp over the hill. One of the church members was a Rotarian, and together with other Rotarians, they agreed that they would provide all the cooking materials needed. In consultation with the squatter camp leaders, it was decided we would provide soup and bread from Monday to Friday at lunchtime, feeding the women and children who were there, and not those who were at work. We estimated around 200 people were there. We negotiated with baker's bread to donate bread to be delivered each day from Monday to Friday. We had a congregation of about 250 people and the funding from the soup came from the church members and various fundraising projects. Within a couple of years it had grown way beyond our capacity to cope and we were feeding well over a thousand people. We applied for and managed to get a grant from the government on the condition that within two years we had to teach the residents the skills to enable them to run the entire scheme on their own and then hand it over to them to run independently. As well as teaching them to run their own soup kitchen, we also sent six of them to a Catholic convention where they learned about money and banking so they could handle the finances. We also had sewing machines donated and taught some of the women who were interested to sew. After four years, we finally handed everything over to them in 1994. George asked me how I felt about the process and I, and I remember saying to him, if I had known at the time the extent of what God was calling me to do, there's no way I would have done it. And we both had a good laugh. But what I learned, and what we all learned, in a nutshell, is that when God calls us to do something and we are faithful, he provides. Which leads me to the words of my song that I chose and why they connect so well for me. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. Whom shall I send? I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart.